Hey there, Ron Sullivan, your online hitting consultant. I want to talk about uh, the problems with uh, youth hitters and their top hand arm. They don't understand the purpose of it. And so I want to show um, uh, the anatomy of an elbow dragger and I also want to talk about um, what you can do um, as far as changing their idea. So if a player doesn't understand the purpose of the top hand, right, you've got to describe to them in an easy way what the purpose of the top hand is. And it's got to be easy because if you just go straight to a drill you're just creating a robot especially with sevens eights nines um you, oh you got an elbow dragger now we're going to stop elbow dragging by hey you've got to do this move well they never understood right the purpose of the top hand arm okay and so i'm going to give you the purpose of the top hand arm i'm going to show some demonstrations of professional hitters as well here in just a second so on the left is a very common theme i see with young players. There's a point in uh, the swing, where, for those of you that record across the plate, where you'll see the knob of the bat facing right at the camera. Right. This is a, a, a normal pattern I see, and I also call it the disappearing bat trick, because they have this thing where, and I'm not kidding, this is, for elbow draggers, you'll see where this bat will just completely disappear, and you'll just see the knob of the bat just right at the camera. So what causes this? Well, first off, uh, elbow draggers or players that youth players in general you can get them in a good starting position we can control that really well right and um, and so I'm gonna show you what happens when a player starts to swing the bat alright so their palm is facing in this direction to some extent for, the, for their top hand arm right and right when you say go the first thing that happens is boom they roll the palm to the sky now if you just think about how the anatomy works number one the hands not gaining any ground remember the swing has started and the hand's not gaining any ground, so the elbow comes and swings underneath. In the meantime, when that happens, we get to this spot, right? The bat completely flattened out behind it. It was just a response to the hand rolling to the sky and the elbow coming underneath. The barrel's responding to that. So anytime you see players or problems with players collapsing on their backside um, or doing, this is what I, I would consider a collapse, but doing this same pattern I'm showing here, it's because a player doesn't understand what the role of the top hand arm is. Right, and so the real problem comes in as they grow in the game, and this is a natural movement. This is natural. Kids don't naturally push the bat. That's garbage. Kids don't naturally swing down on the ball. This is what kids do. This is what kids do when they swing the bat as they're learning the game. So here's where the problem comes in. The problem comes in is not that these kids can't put a bat on the ball. They can still figure out a way to make contact, but they create habits around this because what they find is this sort of sense of of strength and power right so as they wedge this portion of their arm the top portion of their arm into the side of their body and they leave this back they're now going to use their entire core and believe me when you're 55 pounds you're trying as best you can to move a bat that feels to us like oh he's got a drop 12 it shouldn't be that heavy well the kid doesn't have a lot of muscle structure right and, um, and so what they do is they they use these leverage positions to turn the bat right they use their core to turn out of the way to get everything to catch up and let me tell you something for a 60 pound kid that feels pretty strong right it feels much stronger um, than um, perhaps the the right way to do it in the beginning because they're trying the best they can to move a, a foreign object and that's what a bat is to a kid it's the the relationship to the, the player and the bat is usually they're holding a stick and they're trying to whack at a ball right so this gives them some sense of control as well I think somewhere in their brain by doing this position they have a feeling of where they know where the bat is in space they can feel it when they get here they go ah I know where the bat is and now they're gonna use again they're gonna use their body to spin so that's the biggest problem you have with this idea is that in order to make this adjustment you're gonna to have to teach players to do something that initially is not gonna feel as powerful to them because they're not used to using these muscle groups in order to unload the bat and so you're asking them to do something wait a minute I feel like I'm hitting the ball with 60 pounds of my body here and over here uh, if I do that I'm not gonna be doing well too bad you're ultimately going to be more powerful when you learn how to do what I'm demonstrating over here. But a kid, it's not easy to translate that to them, right? And so ultimately, right, now that they've got this position, you can dissect a youth player's swing just like this. This portion of their arm does nothing. Now, maybe nothing is not the right. They use this leverage where they get their bicep portion and their, 
this part of their arm wedged into their side and they'll use that to help turn their shoulders so they can flip the bat, right? Now, everything on the other side of the line, this is now, I guess, the only driving force the player has left in the swing. Okay, so you can forget about this player getting to the inside. It's not going to happen. Once they find this wedge position, they have to turn their body and turn the barrel around, right? And so all they're using is this portion of their arm, right? This is it. And so what ends up happening is they got to turn harder uh, to get the bat to catch up. And what happens is because they're only using this portion of their arm, right, they're using that to flip the bat at the ball. This is another position you'll see with elbow draggers. Their forearm is directly through their hand. Some are, uh, have the elbow leading even at this point. But you'll see this. What this is demonstrating is exactly um, goes into what I was going to tell you is the, the, the fix for this is the player understanding the purpose of the top hand arm. The purpose of the top hand arm is to get behind the ball. That's it. Right? If I can train a player, right? From the very top of the swing, hey, I just need you to get that sucker behind the ball. Then you start seeing patterns like this, right? And that's a completely different move than what the majority, I would say 9 out of 10 youth players do. Completely different. Train your young player to understand that their top, the purpose of their top hand arm is to get behind the ball. And you're going to start seeing more patterns like this. Now, speaking of this, this goes. This is such a big deal. Everybody says, "Oh, you're just you always oversimplify things." It's not a matter of oversimplifying. It's a matter of understanding that that is the goal of a hitter is to get the top hand arm in a position behind the ball, right? And the reason why I can say this isn't oversimplifying is it explains so many things that people that complicate everything that they describe. When the body's doing this, you know, you get tilt, you got rotation, folks. Tilt and rotation can be summed up with just this idea I'm giving you today, right? If your goal as a hitter is to get your top hand arm behind the ball, right? Right there. Notice the difference in my body's positioning. Now, I you're gonna have to just trust me on this, but when I was doing this demonstration at the shop, I didn't, I wasn't saying I'm gonna be demonstrating shoulder tilt and I need to make sure that I exaggerate this. What you see over on the left is why we talk to players about tilt. And so what do we do? Uh, well, there's a guy online that'll have a tilt, tilt, tilty, tilt drill. You know, tilt this, put a bar across your chest and just tilt the bar. This is a person that doesn't understand the purpose of the top hand arm. If you understand the purpose of the top hand arm, right? Then you go, oh, tilt is a natural response. If I'm trying to get the barrel behind the ball, and I've got examples of professionals here in just a second, then this tilt stuff that people are chasing, the mystery, the ones that don't oversimplify things like me, right? The ones that, it, this is a science project. They're the ones that don't understand, right? If you're trying to challenge a player, especially a young player, hey, you need to tilt your shoulders more so you can get on plane. They're not, and you're not, and I'm not trying to be ugly, understanding the purpose, right? If I get my top hand arm behind the ball, I'm going to have tilt. You better believe if the, if the tee is down here and I'm just doing this one-handed drill, you're going to see my shoulders go from this to something even more extreme as I'm trying to get this mechanism behind and through the ball, right? It's going to happen. There's no, it's not a matter of collapsing the back shoulder. It's a matter of compensating for the fact that I've got to get that arm in a position where I can get behind the ball, right? So the other thing is, is rotation. You know, everybody's real big on turn your body these days. Just tell a player to turn more. Kids just don't turn enough. Yada, yada, yada. If your body is rotating in a good swing, the rotation is a product of just this in the upper half. If you can get this, you're going to go a long way. That the body's turn is a response to where the top hand arm has to go. Don't believe it? Right? Here is Chris Davis. Pitch on the inner half. This is a breaking ball, I think. It kind of stays up. Now, if you look at the position of his body, the way this is defined by most people is that all Davis did here is from here he said, I'm just going to turn. Okay. You can 
uh, create a semblance of less elbow drag and you can even um, you can give a visual look that your kids doing it like the pros if you tell them to just do what I just described just turn right but what you're going to lack is the ability to do what Chris Davis is really doing right you'll look like Chris Davis on this pitch but you'll never feel what Chris Davis felt on this pitch because as you watch here on the left He's trying to get that top hand arm through the ball. He's trying to get his entire backside through the ball. Bam. Right? He's not if he if he gets here and says, I'm just gonna turn everything around, this never happens. Look at this ball straight center field. Right? Straight center field. Boom. That's backside getting through the ball. The whole goal here was get that top hand arm behind the ball. Now, this is Chris Davis hitting an opposite field smash, right? Look at the position of his top hand arm. This is not, I'm going to turn and my hands and arms are just going to go in the right place. That's hogwash. Train your player to get behind balls and you're going to see when they get pitches on the outer half, when they get pitches in different parts of the zone, they're going to be able to make that adjustment. If they're just going to, if you just tell them you turn and everything's just going to end up going in the right place, Jimmy. They're going to struggle. Kids going to, especially as they get older and guys know how to hit the outer half, they're going to struggle. Not to mention, 70%, I just know this, I saw this as a stat. I don't know if this is true or not. 70% of strikes in high school baseball are on the outside part of the plate. If you t train a player to just spin and turn, right, you're going to have a player that's not going to be a complete hitter. They're just not going to understand that they may be able to hit balls. Right, they may be able to pull balls and BP over the fence. I don't know, whatever, right? But they're not going to be a complete hitter. They're not going to understand what is the job of the top hand arm. The job of the top hand arm is to get behind the ball. Boom, and this is why here, right? You see the bottom hand arm. We'll just. I know we're talking about the top hand arm. I know a lot of you guys have arm bars, right? And you're trying to figure out how to get away from that. Well, first off. I would say your player has to understand what the role and the purpose of the top hand arm is before you can even begin uh, to fix bottom hand arm issues. Because the bottom hand arm is normally responding to the fact of everything I just pointed out, right? The top hand palm rolling to the sky, the elbow coming underneath, and the, the bottom hand arm is trying to move back to create that and help create that leveraged position, right? And so that's the straightening. So the only way to fix that is, well, some people would say, hey, just keep your front arm bent. Take your arm and move it up towards the pitcher and, and that sort of thing. I believe that the bottom hand arm and a good hitter, now not a mechanical robot, right, where you see on YouTube all the time and they're just turning their elbow up in the sky. Right? And a good hitter, the bottom hand arm is responding to the fact that this player says, man, i got to get behind this ball. And that's that. That position right there that came about was not a matter of, on deck, he said, I'm going to keep my front arm bent, right? It's not a matter of in his practice that he works on keeping his front arm bent. He's working on getting the top hand arm in a position where he can get behind the ball. And that's why you see in this swing over here, right? You see the front arm completely different in this position, right? This is a response. This mechanism is a response to the location of the pitch, period, right? Here's Castellanos. Get behind the ball. Boom. Get the top hand arm behind the ball. Why is his shoulder tilting like that? Is if you can get the top hand arm, if you can get your player thinking, I gotta get my top hand arm behind the ball, boom, that happens naturally. Ball down in the zone, there's gonna be more tilt. Here's Merrifield. Watch this top hand arm move. It's an inside pitch, right? You can see it more on inside pitches but he's trying to set that sucker up to go straight through the ball. Now, if Merrifield gets here and says, now I'm just going to turn my body and rotate at the ball, none of this happens. It doesn't happen because he's going to create, look at that, I'm getting behind it, and I'm going to stay through it with my entire top hand arm, that whole mechanism so I can get my backside through the ball. Boom.
Ron Sullivan, your online hit a consultant. Thanks.